Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Embarking on a transformative journey through military history and strategic operations, we delve into the intricacies of the U.S. Navy's beach landing exercises, an awe-inspiring emulation of the legendary D-Day operations. In the realm of military strategy, D-Day stands as a pivotal moment, marking the commencement of critical combat missions, the most renowned being the Normandy landings on June 6, 1944. This operation was a decisive step in liberating Western Europe from Nazi control during World War II. The concept of D-Day, however, extends beyond this singular event encompassing a multitude of invasions and operations throughout history. In this context, we turn our focus to the RIMPAC 2012, the 23rd iteration of the world's largest international maritime exercise, initiated in 1971. RIMPAC epitomizes the essence of collaborative military training fostering indispensable partnerships and enhancing the collective capability to ensure maritime security and safe sea lanes across the globe's vast oceans. Shifting our focus to the pivotal aspect of well deck operations, we explore a crucial component in modern amphibious warfare. The well deck a hangar-like area situated at the waterline in the stern of certain amphibious warfare ships, plays a crucial role in maritime operations. By ingeniously allowing water to flood this area, these vessels transform their stern into a dynamic gateway for boats, amphibious vehicles, and landing craft. This unique capability, referred to as a well deck in the United States Navy and officially termed a wet well during active operations, demonstrates a remarkable blend of naval architecture and strategic functionality. Tracing the evolution of this concept, the well deck's roots are found in the innovative designs of World War II era tank landing craft. The initial idea, influenced by a 1924 patent from Otto Popper, evolved from a British design for a tank landing craft carrier, which in turn gave rise to the Dock Landing Ship, or LSD. This early version featured a deep, open deck exposed to the elements, fitting the traditional definition of a well deck. Over time, the design underwent a significant transformation, evolving into an enclosed, floatable compartment specifically engineered for docking amphibious vehicles. This adaptation reflects a departure from the original weather deck characteristic, mirroring the broader evolution in commercial ship design, where traditional well deck structures have become less common in contemporary bulk cargo ships, container ships, or passenger liners. As we delve deeper into the capabilities of amphibious operations, we turn our attention to the journey of assault amphibious vehicles, or AAVs, from the well deck to the ship and their return. This segment of the operation underscores the importance of AAVs in the strategic deployment and retrieval of forces in amphibious settings. The development of these vehicles is a testament to the evolving needs and technological advancements in marine warfare. The U.S. Marine Corps, recognizing the limitations of the LVTP-5, including its restricted range and slow water speed, sought a more capable replacement. This quest for advancement began in 1964 leading to the selection of a proposal by FMC to develop a new class of amphibious vehicles. After extensive testing, the Marine Corps, in June 1970, 
commissioned FMC for the production of 942 vehicles with a contract valued at $78.5 million. This development highlighted the Corps' commitment to enhancing their amphibious warfare capabilities, ensuring the efficient and effective transportation of Marines from ship to shore and back. Moving our focus to the dynamic aspect of beach landings, we examine the role of landing craft, air cushioned, or LCAC, in deploying U.S. Marines and their equipment. A vivid demonstration of this capability was observed during the Rim of the Pacific, or RIMPAC 2012, where LCACs embarked from the amphibious assault ship USS Essex or LHD-2, played a crucial role. These highly maneuverable crafts are not only instrumental in transporting personnel, but also in ensuring the rapid and efficient delivery of vital equipment to strategic locations. RIMPAC 2012, the 23rd iteration of the world's largest international maritime exercise, saw an unprecedented gathering of 22 nations, featuring over 40 ships and submarines, more than 200 aircraft, and a staggering 25,000 personnel. Conducted from June 29 to August 3, in and around the Hawaiian Islands, RIMPAC epitomizes the essence of international maritime cooperation. The exercise serves as a unique platform for fostering and sustaining cooperative relationships, essential for the security and safety of sea lanes and the world's oceans. The deployment and operation of LCACs during the exercise not only showcased their tactical efficiency, but also highlighted their role in strengthening global maritime partnerships. Further advancing our exploration of innovative amphibious capabilities, we now turn to the Ultra Heavy Lift Amphibious Connector, or UHAC concept, a groundbreaking development by the Marine Corps' Warfighting Laboratory. This concept represents a significant leap in amphibious transportation, aiming to enhance the U.S. Marine Corps' ability to transport heavier loads from ship to shore overcoming a range of shore obstacles. The UHAC initiative leverages the CAAT's air-filled track system, combining buoyancy with robust land mobility. A pivotal moment for the UHAC was its demonstration during RIMPAC 2014, where a half-scale model showcased its remarkable capabilities. This prototype measuring 42 feet in length and 26 feet in width, was launched from the USS Rushmore, or LSD-47, carrying an internally transportable vehicle. Its innovative design, featuring track feet fitted with air-impregnated foam blocks, enables it to navigate through diverse terrains like mud, sand, and marshland, while maintaining a low ground pressure of approximately 1 PSI. The envisioned full-size UHAC, significantly larger and more potent than its half-scale precursor, is designed to potentially replace or supplement the landing craft air cushion hovercraft and the landing craft utility. With an impressive payload capacity ranging from 150 to 190 tons and an operational range of 200 nautical miles, the UHAC stands as a formidable contender in amphibious operations. Notably, its cost-effectiveness and maintenance advantages, coupled with the ability to traverse inland and surmount obstacles like 10-foot seawalls, make it an attractive proposition for modern amphibious warfare. The journey of the UHAC from concept to prototype 
has been a collaborative effort involving the U.S. Office of Naval Research and the Singapore Ministry of Defense Science and Technology Department. While the full-scale production decision is pending, the UHAC's development underscores a significant stride in enhancing amphibious operational capabilities. As we progress in our exploration of modern amphibious warfare, we shift our focus to the integration of new technologies in beach landing operations. This aspect is exemplified in the ship-to-shore maneuver exploration and experimentation advanced naval technology exercise, where Marines rigorously field test over 50 different emerging technologies. This exercise provides a crucial platform for warfighters to evaluate these innovations, focusing on enhancing capabilities in amphibious assault operations. The technologies under assessment cover a wide array of mission areas, including early reconnaissance, threat identification, elimination, maneuver ashore, combat power ashore, and advanced amphibious command and control systems. The goal is to identify technologies that significantly boost operational efficiency and effectiveness in challenging environments. Those that prove successful in this rigorous field testing phase are earmarked for further formal operational evaluation, paving the way for their potential integration into future amphibious operations. Continuing our journey through the realm of advanced naval technology, we turn to a groundbreaking aspect of the ship-to-shore maneuver exploration and experimentation, the deployment of drones from assault amphibious vehicles, or AAVs. This facet of the exercise exemplifies the Marine Corps' commitment to integrating unmanned and rapidly prototyped technologies into their operational framework. This innovative exercise is a collaborative effort bringing together experts from industry, academia, and government research and development. They are invited to showcase their latest technological and engineering innovations, with a focus on addressing key missions of the U.S. Navy and Marine Corps. During the 2017 Advanced Naval Technology Exercise, the Marine Corps had the opportunity to work hands-on with these technological prototypes. evaluating their potential to enhance operational effectiveness in real-world environments. The integration of these technologies represents a significant leap forward in military capabilities, extending operational reach across various domains, including information and cyberspace. This evolution in warfare underscores the Marine Corps' adaptability and readiness in an increasingly complex and technologically advanced battlefield. As we conclude our exploration of the United States Marines' billion-dollar ship-to-shore operations, we have witnessed the remarkable synergy of strategy, technology, and courage. From the well-coordinated, well-deck operations to the innovative use of the UHAC and LCACs, each element showcased the Marines' adaptability and prowess in amphibious warfare. The integration of cutting-edge technologies, such as the deployment of drones from AAVs, and the field testing of new tech in ship-to-shore maneuver exploration and experimentation, underscores a future where Marine operations are more efficient, effective, and technologically advanced. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.